we're going to look at how Zephyr Scale addresses seven complexities of test management. Now there's many features and functions you can assess your test management solution against. In a side-by-side -side feature comparison we completed, we identified about 100 different features, but seven of the most important and complex to implement are assignment, version control, parameterization, and libraries, result aggregation, retesting, and configurations and releases. In this mini webinar, I'm going to show you how Zephyr Scale stacks up against those seven criteria. First then, assignment of test cases. When we're writing test cases, you can't have the concept of the owner of a test case. So in the test library, you will find the owner dropdown to assign the owner of the test case. And you can think of that as the person that's responsible for maintaining that test case. Test cases are executed within cycles in Zephyr Scale. And the test cycle has a concept of both an owner and an assigned to value. So the test cycle can be owned by a person and then the test cases within the cycle assigned to one or more people. And you can see here that there's a really neat view which shows that this particular test cycle has got multiple people assigned to test cases within the test cycle. Unfortunately, one limitation is that if you search based on who they're assigned to and statuses, you can't search for assigned to a particular user and test status equals not executed. But this view does show you which test cycles you as a tester should be looking at and running tests where the status is not executed. If you drill into a test cycle to edit the test cycle rather than run it, you'll find in here that you can update the owner of the test cycle and on the test cases tab you can modify and update the assigned to value at a test case level within the test cycle. And you can also bulk update and search and filter based on those uh, assignments as well. If we come back out then from editing the test cycle and we now look at running the test cycle with the test player, we have the option to show only tests that are assigned to me and when we select individual test cases, which you can see who's assigned to a particular test case, you have that option of the assigned to value and the exec executed by value as well to be set. The only slight limitation I'd say when you're looking at the test cycles from a tester's perspective is that there's no one place or one filter you can apply to show you all of the test cases that are in a not executed state and assigned to me. Next then, version control. And this can mean many things. Tracking the version number of a test case each time it changes, or having the ability to diff different versions of test cases, or at a minimum making sure that if you update a test case in the library, it does not update the version of the test case where it's already been completed in a test run, which could invalidate the test results. In Zephyr then, if we drill into a particular test case, we do have the ability to increment the version of a test case. Simply from the new version button, which will create a new instance and a new version of that test case, rolling the version from 1.0 to 2.0. And we can then select the different versions of the test cases from the drop down here. The history view under the test case tabs gives you a good indication of what's been changed between the different versions too. Now, when you update a version that's already been executed, and for example, 
if we look at this test case which is already in a past state in one of the test cycles and you roll the version it's easy to see under the execution view which version of the test case was used in that execution. So I may have multiple versions of a test case if I create new versions but it's easy to see which version is run in a test execution. Now if I was to go to a test cycle and taking this test case T5 and add it to a new test or an existing test cycle so I edit the test cycle go to test cases add test case and I search for T5 the neat thing here is that I can select from the different versions that I want to add to that test cycle and maybe I add a previous version of that test case for this particular test cycle test run I want to to execute. On to parameterization then. We don't like the repetitiveness of writing similar test cases over and over. Better to have a way to parameterize those tests and drive them with data. In Zephyr Scale then when we go to edit the test scripts what we'll find is that we have two options for parameterizing the test cases and the test steps. First is test data and the second is parameters. Think of test data as a grid or table of test data and you can think of parameters as just individual, if you like, variables that you'll set values for. If we start with parameters, which is the simpler of the two options, you add a parameter, maybe first name, and a value and then you can use that parameter in multiple places throughout your test steps in Zephyr. So it makes it really easy to you to reuse a value throughout one or more test steps in your test script. The second option then is test data and this allows us to create a grid of columns and rows of data and we can create that data by defining columns here add another column and another maybe and then within here we add the rows which might be the data sets themselves and if we got two rows of data and again we can use those values in the test steps with the same nomenclature using the curly brackets and build out our tests in so this is an instance of using a test data set that's embedded within the particular test case another nice feature about this is that we can build out those data sets within the project and use them in multiple test cases and you can do that by either going to the configuration screen or you can say new data set from here and those permutations of data that we've defined if we then look at the test cycles where this test case will be executed where I've added in version 2 of that test case we'll then see test scripts and test steps for each row of the data in the table Next up then, test libraries, or rather, how does Zephyr Scale manage the pool of test cases that you're writing and developing? It's clean, it's simple, and it's easy to use in Zephyr. 
tests are categorized by folder and subfolders and you can also categorize them by labels components and status so we can add labels we can use the inbuilt Jira components capability so we can categorize by one and only one component that a test case might apply to and we also have the status or development stage of this test case which is a pick from list that you can define under the configuration area there is no workflow concept like there is in a Jira issue type though you don't transition from one status to the next and enforce that transition it's literally pick any status as and when you need to using that search capability from the test cases view then you can filter using those criteria whether that's labels status priority component etc and then select in bulk or individually and just add those to create a test cycle the only thing I would point out is that when you're running those tests as part of a test cycle there is no ability to update during the execution in some tools there is the ability to update and then even replicate that change back to the library during the execution but none of those advanced features in here I'm afraid but still very competent very easy to use library concept within Zephyr scale test result aggregation then when you run tests against different versions or builds of an application that is under test in the ideal world each time you get a new build you run all of your tests against that build but we all know that's not possible in the real world so you're going to run some of your tests against one build or version and others against another build or version and you need to aggregate the test results and find out the latest set of test results that you've run across a selection of builds now the way Zephyr approaches this is quite clever although it does have some limitations if we drill into a test cycle what we'll see is the test cycle itself is allocated to a build or version defined in Jira and then the individual test cases themselves can be set to be run against different builds or versions within here the limitation is that when you come to the reporting the reports filtering is run against a test cycle or a version and you can add multiple versions to that but this is the version for the test cycle not the individual test cases going back to the test cycle though the way Zephyr expects you to deal with this is that you create this test cycle for one particular build or version so in this case I've set the cycle up to run against perhaps build 100 and then when I come to execute the build I run most of the tests against build 100 and if I then have a new release and a new build to test against and I have a failed test case for example I might start a new execution of that individual test case and that execution I then set to run against a later build so this particular test case is a repeat of the same test case against a previous build and then the neat thing in the reporting is that when you come to the reports you'll see you have the results down here and you can pick to only report on that latest test execution within the test cycle retesting so you have test cases that have failed in previous builds or versions and you need to identify all of those and rerun them 
you'd expect to be able to come to the test cases area of Zephyr and identify all of the tests that have failed. Um, you can do that and you can see the last run result in this column here but unfortunately you can't search by the last run result and if a test case has a last status of not executed it masks the failure so it's difficult to identify all of the test cases that have failed in the test library when it comes to the test cycles you can drill into a test cycle where you know you've had failed test cases and in that test cycle you can rerun a test case by creating a new execution but again even from the test cycles area in Zephyr it's difficult to identify and group all of the test cases that have failed and that need to be re-executed. Configurations and releases. How do we track which test cases have been run against which releases or environments or configurations of your product under test? Zephyr Scale handles this well because as we've already seen at the test cycle level when you edit the cycle you can link the overall cycle to a version or a build that's defined within JIRA and when you run the test cases within the cycle each individual test case can be linked to a different version build that you've defined within JIRA. When it comes to the configurations or the environments that you might be running against again you can track this at the test case or the test cycle level and those values are defined in the configuration area of JIRA so under the configuration settings you can define environments I've configured them as dev test UAT but that could be a more specific configuration setup and then you can select one of those values from the drop down list against the test case or the test cycle you can also configure that in bulk when you edit the test cycle and the tests within the cycle as you'll see here we've got the environment value and you can pick from the drop down list here or bulk update in one go and assign to an environment if you're looking to run the same test case against multiple environments then you've got two options you can include the same test case multiple times and then add it so that it's run against different environments or you could duplicate the overall cycle and assign the whole cycle to a different environment so that you run the test cycle multiple times when it comes to reporting there's no filter on the majority of the reports that allows you to filter by environment so when you use these filters here there's no environment filter but there is a specific report for test results by environment so this will show you the different environments and the test results linked to each environment in conclusion then, Zephyr deals with most of these complexities very well and very cleanly, avoiding any unnecessary complexity. The only area I'd say that isn't well served is aggregating test results across releases and builds. But that's something very few tools are good at, and probably something that could be solved with a custom reporting engine if you really needed it.